Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be here with you again. Uh, we're, this is week three already, huh? We're coming towards the end, but we still have a couple sessions left. So we've covered a lot, mashallah. And let me actually um, pull up, sorry, one second, go through the presentation so that we can get to some of the questions, which you guys know, right? You know all of this. I've quizzed you a lot about the author of the text, which is Imam al-Mawlud, and the translator of the text, which is Sheikh Hamza Yusuf, right? You know all of this, mashallah. Um, but, and we've co covered all the eight hearts, right? So here we're just going to quickly go through them. We've covered all this stuff. Last week, we talked about um, three different diseases. And we, um, I wanted to actually quiz you on them real quickly. Uh, so let's just see here. I want to make sure I'm in the right one, right list. So we have 13, 14, 15. Um, okay, so we covered last week a disease of the heart that talked about when you do something, but your intention isn't for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to see you, but rather for someone else to see you. What is that disease of the heart called? Hmm? <coughs> Alhamdulillah, excuse me. Allergies. We have the windows open today. So my allergies have been up. So anybody want to tell me what's the disease of, oh wait, let me check the chat box. Sorry. Um, it was kind of behind there. So the que the question is when you, good, mashallah, yes, me and you got it. Awesome. A ostentation is the disease of the heart where you are trying to get attention uh, with your good deeds from other people, right? You're, you're doing it for that niya. What is the Arabic of the word ostentation? Let's see who knows that. Hmm. Very good, Rahil. Awesome. So, uh, Ismail, you got it confused. Riya is, um, uh, wait, hold on. Did I read it wrong? No. Okay, I'm sorry. You got it right. So, Rahil and Ismail, you both got it right. I, I read it wrong. So, Riya is, yes, ostentation. Excellent. And we got Lala Haidara. Very good. So, three of you came in with the answer. Awesome. MashaAllah. And then Rahil is coming in with the next uh, uh, disease of the heart, which I was about to ask you. You already jumped the gun and gave me the answer. That's awesome. And you gave me the Arabic. Very happy. But let's see if others can remember as well. This next disease of the heart is when you put your trust in people, right? You're not, you're, you're looking too much at the people in your life and asking their help for everything. Um, and you forget that all help or all assistance really comes from one source, which is, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is that? Very good, Zoya. Excellent. Relying on other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you put your trust or you rely on other than God, that is a disease of the heart. And uh, mashallah, like I said, um, Rahil gave us the Arabic. Can anybody else give the Arabic? I want to see if anybody else can, um, can come up with it. Anybody else? The Arabic. Very good, mashallah. <laughs> Excellent. Layla, Rahil, of course, came in first with that answer. And then uh, Lala, excuse me, not Layla. And then Ismail, you said ala ghair something. You know, <laughs> you'll get some points for that. Uh, so excellent, mashallah. Um, and then the last one, I, I saw some uh, people also giving the answer for it. But those of you who don't know, because I'm the only one who can see the answer, well, myself and Sister Homera. So those of you who don't know yet, what is the disease of the heart when you are not happy about something and you're kind of like, why me? Why did this have to happen to me? Right? What is that called? Okay, awesome. So again, mashallah. Rahil came with both the English and the Arabic. Excellent job. Displeasure with the divine decree. This is a disease of the heart. And that's Sakhat al-Qadr. Very good. Zoya and Dania as well. You guys are coming through. That's fantastic. MashaAllah, you guys are paying attention. I love it. So great job. We have so much to cover, you guys, because there's quite a few diseases of the heart left. So um, inshallah, oh, and then yeah, we did another one. Oh, Rahil, you, you reminded me, I forgot. 
whenever you're trying to, to, so there's ostentation is showing off, but when you want people to hear about your good deeds and you want to be popular and famous, um, that's also a disease of the heart, which we covered, right? And that is suma or seeking reputation. Very good, you guys. So I forgot that we did four last time. Great job, but we do have quite a lot of content to go through today. So let's go ahead and get into the presentation. I'm gonna quickly go through um, the presentation from last week because we covered all of this. Uh, we did Khof al Faqr, oh no, that was the week before. So, on, I mean, Tuesday. So, Thursday is where we did these four ostentation, relying on other than God, displeasure with divine decree, and seeking reputation. So, now we're going to go to week three. Okay, and I have a slide. Where is it? It's coming. Here we go. So, week three. So, Alhamdulillah. A lot of content left. So, for today, we're going to cover these three uh, diseases of the heart false hope negative thoughts and vanity, okay? Tul al amal su'ad dhan and then ajib. And uh, the definitions are right here and we'll go over each one separately, okay? So let's go ahead and jump into it, inshallah. Um, false hopes, the first one. So false hopes is the belief that you will live forever, okay? And that belief that, oh, I have all this time makes you heedless, which is careless. Like you're just not really caring about uh, your responsibilities. First and foremost, as we talked about, the most important responsibility we have is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you start, you know, becoming heedless, that means you won't pray on time or you miss your prayers altogether, or you just kind of, you know, don't really care about uh, doing good deeds as much because you're too busy thinking, oh, I have homework and I have to go, I want to watch this movie and I want to listen to this uh, song or I want to play this video game or you get caught up in life and then you keep thinking, well, it's okay, I'm young or I'm this, I'm that. Later on in life, I will, you know, do more good work. So why do I have to do it now, right? I'm a young kid or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a youth. I have all this time in my life. So that is actually a disease of the heart because nobody knows how much time we have, and whatever time we have, we should use it in good deeds, right? We should use it first and foremost, again, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then to be good to his creation. So a person, again, like this, they just, they waste their time a lot. They, who have this disease, they waste their time because they think they have this false idea that they have a long time to live. And so Allah subhanahu wa says about such a person that when death comes, they're going to suddenly wake up and they'll say, man, I wish I had sent ahead some good for my life. Like I wish I did more good deeds because now it's too late. Once we die, right? It's too late. And then Imam Ali told us, he said that, uh, you know, most people, people are asleep and then when they die, they will wake up. So what does that mean, right? What does it mean to, to wake up after you die? Well, the idea that people are asleep is something we should uh, kind of better understand, that there's a lot of people who are walking around us in a sleep-like state, right? Because when you're asleep, what are you doing? You're dreaming, right? So there's people, again, who are in a dream-like state. They're walking around, they're talking to people, they're uh, going to work, they're eating, they're just doing a lot, but they uh, think that this world is you know, going to go on forever. And because they're walking around in a dream-like state, they are forgetful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects them to do certain things and they have to do those things. And that also death is imminent, which means it's always around, right? Death is around us and people are dying every day, every minute of every day, even within seconds. I don't know the exact statistic, but every, we could probably say maybe every few seconds, someone is dying, right? So we have to be realistic. And then also that the day of judgment is real. So when someone, when we say someone is asleep and then they wake up when they die, that means that all of a sudden the dream of the world is over and they realize like, oh, now I wish I had more done more good deeds. So it's a very dangerous state to be in. 
okay, this uh, having false hope. So how do we treat it? Well, you have to, as we said, remember that death is real and inevitable and that no one and nothing escapes it. And then understand that life has phases. So a lot of you who are youth, right, you're in a phase of uh, learning, of having fun. It's a very exciting time to be a child. But once you get older, as you get older, you're going to get more and more responsibilities. And those responsibilities are important. And you, ha you can't let that fun of youth uh, start to affect your responsibilities, that you just keep wanting to play like a child for your whole life. All you care about is fun, 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 and entertainment. That is not right. And that's not to say you can't have fun. Of course, we should have fun. Allah made the dunya uh, enjoyable for us, but we should not live to have fun. And that's the difference. So if you want to play with your Legos or you want to play on the computer with the video game, or you want to play a board game, or you want to do art or play an instrument or anything, a sport. That is something that you can do once in a while just because it's enjoyable. But if that's the only reason that you, um, you know, like to wake up in the morning or your all your day is just that thing, then you're going to forget a lot. And a lot of people, that's what happens to them. They'll get so caught up in a movie or a video game that they completely uh, forget to worship Allah. And I'm going to tell you like how these things can be so addictive. I watched a documentary, which is like a movie last week about the dangers of, you know, certain things about the internet and video games. And part of that documentary said that there was a group of people, I won't mention the country, but there, there's a country where the people are so addicted to video games. And I want you to think about this because it's real. And they actually showed, um, you know, a room full of people on their computers playing video games. But they said that it's very common in that country that the people are so addicted to their video games, they actually wear diapers. They will wear, these are adults. They're not children. They're adults who, because they don't want to break from the game, they think that it's okay for them to wear, sit in their seat and just wear a diaper uh, so that they can continue playing their games. I mean, that's a level of extreme that we should all say, astaghfirullah, we should never want that. But this is the danger of thinking, uh, getting careless with your time and thinking, oh, it's no big deal. You know, I'm just gonna, um, I have plenty of time when I'm older and then I'll do things. So let me just keep having fun, fun, fun. No, when you reach the age of adolescence, which your parents will talk to you about, hopefully, if you don't know about it yet, but it's the age where a child starts to become more like an adult. Well, in Islam, when that happens, then you are considered what balik, which means that you are now accountable. So you have to uh, start doing all of the same things. You have to start fasting and praying. You are treated like an adult. And so you can't just think, oh, because I'm still in school and I am treated like a child, maybe by other people, that I shouldn't do my responsibilities. No, we have responsibilities to Allah and we should fulfill those responsibilities. And then we also know that we worship Allah and the real fun is in the next life. Jannah is where we're going to have a lot of fun and we don't have to worry about going to the bathroom in Jannah. So there's no need for diapers. Uh, we can eat and we can enjoy life and everything is great, inshallah, okay? So that's what the treatment is to keep your mind focused. Death is always near. I shouldn't think I have that much time and I should remember to prioritize and worship Allah as he deserves, inshallah. So this is the Treatment for the disease of the heart, tulal amal, false hopes. So let's go ahead and go to the next disease. So negative thoughts. This is su'adhan, okay? So su'adhan is a very serious disease of the heart because it's just having suspicion or bad thoughts about someone without really any evidence, right? There's nothing at all that you would that would tell you that someone is a bad person or that you shouldn't like them, except for your own thoughts. So it's not like you saw them do something bad or you believe that they were guilty of something bad because there was evidence. 
you just have a suspicious mind or heart and then you start to think really bad things about them. Well, this is not permissible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, oh, you who believe, avoid suspicion for some suspicion is sinful. So when you have, you let your heart become suspicious of people, it's not good to do that unless that person, like if someone comes and they have, uh, you know, they're, they have, let's say their hands in their pocket and one and, and their finger looks like, you know, or, or something looks like maybe it's a gun or a weapon, that's not being suspicious without evidence. You could look at them and go, that person looks really suspicious. Why are they walking around with their hands like that? Is that a gun in their pocket? Oh my gosh, that's, and you could, you know, protect other people because you're acting on that thing, thought. But that, so that's not what we're talking about. This is just having a bad thought about someone for really no reason at all. And that's why it's not permissible. And then the other thing is that we have to remember when you have negative thoughts about someone for really no reason, the danger is that it's usually going to not stay inside of you. Those thoughts want to come out. So you want to wait till your friend comes or your sister or your brother. And then you want to say, oh, look at that person. They look so weird. And then you start both of you mocking them and making fun of them. And I bet you they're like this. And I bet you, you know, you start talking really badly about a person and they're totally innocent. They've done nothing. So this is the danger is that you start to what lead to bad words and then you got another person involved too and now whatever they do is also on you, right? So negative thoughts are, are, are problematic in so many ways. You, they, they're just showing that you have a suspicious heart, but then also leading you to gossip and to bring someone else into sinful behavior with you. Because when you gossip, you need someone else there with you, right? You're doing it together. So this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam warned us that he who believes in Allah and the last day must either speak good or remain silent. So this is a warning about speaking good, but of course, like we said, negative thoughts, if you don't stop them, they'll lead you to not speaking very good. And so it's a disease of the heart that can cause so many problems. And so this is also another really important hadith to, to remember. Every day when we wake up in the morning, our limbs, right, uh, which are different parts of our body, as is in this picture here, they actually all go to the tongue and they say, oh, tongue, fear Allah, like fear Allah, tongue, because the tongue gets us in trouble and it's connected to negative thoughts. Like I said, if you have a bad thought about someone, it's not going to stay inside you. Eventually, it's going to want to come out. And then now you're lying maybe about someone, you're gossiping, you're spreading slander, which are all like, you know, really haram. They're not acceptable. So this is why your body, aware of the danger of the tongue, asks the tongue, like, fear Allah. And then it says, why? Because we're going to be punished or rewarded based on what you do. So if you're straight, which means you speak the truth and you fear Allah, then all of us will be good. But if you're not, then you get all of us in trouble, right? So your hands, your feet, your uh, eyes, your ears, all of it is like basically telling the tongue, stop getting all of us in trouble because you can't control yourself, right? And But again, the tongue, it doesn't act on its own. It acts on what's going on in the heart and in the mind. So this is why you have to be careful of those negative thoughts because it will eventually lead to negative actions for the whole body, right? So very important disease of the heart for us to know. So the treatment, this is the problem that I'm telling us very clearly what not to do. First, you stop being suspicious of people, okay? Then you don't look for faults in other people and you don't spy. Stop trying to find someone's problems. You know, some people, they, that's all they do. They just watch people all day long and look for things that are uh, the flaws in them or faults in them. Um, or they, you know, like you'll be in a classroom setting or in a meeting or at the masjid. And there's people who just like to watch other people uh, do something that's going to embarrass them, that they can laugh at, that they can mock. And then they go and tell their friends or whoever, oh yeah, this guy in the masjid, he did this. And then guess what happened? Then he did this. And then you're just looking for, you know, it's not a good thing to do because all you're doing is spending time, uh, wasting your time actually, 
and speaking ill about another person who's totally innocent. They came to worship Allah or do something, you know, whether you're at the masjid or somewhere like the library or a restaurant or anything, people are there to do something. And now you're just making fun of them. You know, it's really wrong. So you don't look for faults. You don't spy. You don't watch people, right? You're, you, and he also says, do not be jealous of one another. Because sometimes negative thoughts come from jealousy and hesed, right? Which we talked about before. Do not uh, desert, which is like uh, to cut your relation with one another. Don't um, cut off ties and do not hate one another. Oh, uh, and oh, Allah's worshipers, be brothers, Allah has, which Allah has ordered you to be, right? So all of these are ways that we can protect ourselves from having negative thoughts. They start with those suspicions, right? Don't have suspicions in the first place and don't actively try to find things that you can talk about someone else about. Don't get yourself involved in that type of uh, uh, deed because it's a bad deed and it's haram and it usually like I said it's uh, it, that kind of stuff says suggests that you're likely jealous or you have envy of the person or you're just someone who likes to waste your time doing things that are wrong so in every case it's uh, it's uh, not uh, acceptable and that's why the Prophet is warning us not to do these things so this is how we inshallah stop uh, those thoughts and to remember that the angels are recording everything right all of our good deeds are being recorded so nothing will be forgotten you want to be very careful that if your negative thoughts turn into negative actions that Allah is counting all of that and that's what you're going to be held accountable for on the day of judgment so don't think it's just gonna you know nothing's gonna happen right be very careful so that's the uh, disease of negative thoughts um, now the next one is, let's read this one here. Did you know that there are some people afflicted with this next disease and they can't help but see themselves as very, very special. They actually walk around very proud of themselves and often looking down on other people. They completely reject the fact that every good that they have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this picture, you see, I'm sure you can see what they are. They're just a bunch of eggs, right? But if you look at this egg on top, it's got some special things, right? It's got a shiny color and it's wearing a crown and it looks at itself as better. And that's why it's walking actually on top of these other eggs. And they're definitely not happy about it, right? But there are some people that walk around this way because maybe they Allah gave them wealth or they gave he gave them beauty or he gave them privilege and power. Maybe they come from like a family that has a lot of power and whatever it is that they have, they become very uh, what arrogant and 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 vain about it. And we're going to talk about this word. OK, vain. What does that mean? So vain or vanity ujub, is a disease of the heart where someone is so full of pride for their, for their blessings um, that could be about their appearance, which is the way they look, or achievements. So you could be vain about your, your schoolwork. Let's say you got really good grades, you know, and your teachers, you were top of your class and you won some awards at school that can make you vain where you start to think that you're really good and you're better than other people, right? And when you get stuck on thinking that it's coming from you, this is the disease. Because to say that Alhamdulillah, Allah gave me a blessing, Alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful for that blessing. There's nothing wrong with recognizing the gifts that Allah has given you, okay? But when you think that you are the reason for those gifts, like you're giving credit only to yourself, and then you treat other people a certain way, this is clearly a disease of the heart because Allah is the source of all of our good. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So the Prophet here tells us, eat and drink, give charity and wear clothes as long as that does not involve any extravagance or vanity. So what he's telling us here is enjoy the blessings of your life, right? Eat and drink. Allah's given you a life where you can enjoy good food and good drink. 
Um, Alhamdulillah, that's great. And give charity, wear clothes. So you can actually wear nice clothing and be a charitable person, right? Be a generous person, but don't do it in a way that makes you feel like you're better than other people or with extravagance, which is you're going over the top, right? If you eat and drink and let's say you only eat at the best restaurants, okay? I can't ever eat at this restaurant because it's not, you know, it's not clean enough for me or it's not uh, this enough for me. And you just kind of are very boastful about the fact that you want to eat a special kind of food and it's, you know, very decadent, which is like rich and maybe it's a very expensive meal, but that you walk around and you just carry yourself like, look at me, I'm so better. I only eat at the best restaurants, right? And that's all I put in my body. Or when you wear clothing, you also do the same thing. You only wear brand name clothing and, oh, I would never shop there, right? I would never go to that store because I don't, their clothing just is so below my style. I need the best of the best. And so this kind of attitude that you are better than other people, and even that can happen when you're being charitable. There are people who are very arrogant even when they're giving to other people they're acting like they're you know so generous and you should be so thankful that i'm even looking at your direction and giving you money or giving you food or whatever that they're giving so here this is a clear warning like do things because we're human and we live in this world we can do certain things and enjoy those things but make sure you do not do them in excess, which is what extravagance is, where you're going over the top and you're just being really a little bit too much, too extra, as they say, or you're doing it with vanity, where you think that you are so special uh, that you're better than other people. And you know we're gonna explain a little bit more about this. So now arrogance is very closely related to Arjib, okay? The difference is that arrogance requires two people. So if you're an arrogant person, and that's coming, it's one of the diseases we'll cover soon, boasting and arrogance, it's coming. But if you're an arrogant person, you need other people, right, to uh, display your arrogance to. Like, so you walk around, again, treating people like they're less than you and not good, right, good enough. Vanity doesn't need another person. Uh, Ojib is really just about a person being so full of themselves, thinking that all of their good is from them, that there's no mention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you know, they're not, not really thinking about all of the great the gifts that Allah's given them and they don't make gratitude to Allah, but rather they attribute all their good deeds to themselves. So we're, what Ojib and how they're different in, is, is the attribution, right? that uh well they're i'm sorry they're both attributed wrongly but they're it's also the audience for ujib you don't need an audience it's you're the only audience it's 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 you it's you thinking that you are good looking because you you know have great genes or you know your uh skin is you take care of your skin and you you have a great um you know sort of a makeup routine if you're if you wear makeup or your hair is so nice because you take care of it but you constantly keep again putting the focus on yourself, right? And then kibbut or arrogance, which we're going to again talk about soon, is where you think all of these things and then, <clears throat> excuse me, you actually treat other people like they're less than you and you uh, puff yourself up in front of people. Both of these qualities are interrelated, uh, inshallah. Okay, so, um, and inshallah, I'm sorry, we'll, we'll talk about it uh, more when we get to boastful uhness and arrogance but it's important to understand that they're very very closely tied and then you know the danger again of, of vanity and arrogance is that it it allows this pride and arrogance into the heart right and the prophet told us that no one who has the weight of a seed of a single seed of arrogance in his heart or her heart will enter paradise this should make all of us never want to ever have ajib or be boastful, show off, right? We talked about ostentation, riya. We talked about suma. We talked about all these diseases of the heart, which really is about showing off and you know being and allowing these things because they kind of all work together eventually. 
right? You, you start to develop all of these diseases of the heart, but at the root of it is that you deny that the good that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all that matters is that he is pleased with you and instead you start focusing on other people and trying to show off to them and then you start thinking you're better than them so this is how it all works right so it's a trap of shaitan and so um you know in this hadith when the prophet said that about the weight of a seed of arrogance in his heart, someone was like, but what if like a man loves to have beautiful clothes and shoes, right? So he's worried because he's like, uh oh, I don't want to have uh, arrogance, but I, at the same time, I like to have nice stuff. What about that? Is there anything wrong with that, right? And then the Prophet ﷺ replied, he said, what? Verily, Allah is beautiful and he loves beauty. Arrogance means rejecting the truth and looking down on people. So this is not about not having nice things, okay? Um, you can definitely like nice things and have nice things. It's about your attitude when you walk around in those nice things or when you're, um, you know, again, getting certain attention for things. How do you see yourself with regards to other people? That's what this disease of the heart is talking about. So let's again explore this just a little further. So here's this hadith again, the same exact hadith, right? Um, so I want to make it clear. Um, the seed that we're talking about, look at these are seeds. These are multiple seeds, okay, in someone's hand. Now, when he tells us that the weight of a seed, he didn't say a lot of seeds. He said a seed, right? One seed of arrogance. So you can see how tiny a seed of arrogance is. And he's telling us, if you have that much arrogance in your heart, you will not enter paradise. Audubillah, we have to make a lot of toba from this disease of the heart if we have it and ask Allah to remove it from our hearts and to ask him to protect our hearts from it because we don't want to ever think of ourselves in a way that is arrogant whether that means we just are so prideful of what we have and we walk around even within our own hearts and go oh like I have such nice eyes and my uh, teeth are so white and my hair is so beautiful and my skin is so this, you know, like whatever the thought is that comes to you that makes you feel prideful is a dangerous thought because you're not uh, remembering it's all from Allah and he can take it away any minute. There are so many people that had, you know, a lot of good and khayr in their life and everything was going well and it was taken away. A lot of stories, like if you ask your parents to tell you the story of Prophet Ayyub, uh, alayhi salam, and see how he was tested, he had everything. He had a great life and then Allah tested him uh, and took everything away and see how he responded. But that can happen to someone at any time in their life. So if you start to uh, think these things, that's the danger is that you can have them taken away from you. Instead, always say, Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. Thank you, Allah, for all of the blessings you've given me, for my health, for my wealth, for the parents I have, just constantly remembering it was all from Allah. It's not from you. And even if you go further, like in school and you get into a good college and you get a great job, eventually, inshallah, that'll happen for all of you where you will succeed. You want to always remember that every part of that success is from Allah, all of it. Even if you did the hard work, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> even if you uh, stayed up late and you worked on a bunch of projects and research, uh, research papers and, and did a lot of work on tests and exams and you did all the work yourself, you can't say that it's your work that led you to that success. All of it is from Allah because Allah is the one who gave you the means to do it. He gave you the brain, the capacity, the time, all of that comes from him. And if he didn't give you those things, you wouldn't have been able to achieve any good in your life. So this is how we push back against those, those thoughts is no, it's all from Allah. And I'm just going to always say, say thank you to him instead of letting my heart get puffed up and thinking uh, of myself as something special. Because, you know, a lot of, um, you'll find that adults and other people in your life, 
they'll start to compliment you more on certain things. And this is how some of these diseases can take root because those compliments feel good. It's nice to have someone say, wow, you play basketball so good, or oh my gosh, you're such a talented writer and you speak so nicely and look how well you're dressed. And oh, I love your hair. And oh, you know, and they just throw all these compliments at you. It's very natural for the human being to like those things. But you have to remember, if you start to believe that those things are from you, and then you let that to make you feel special, like that egg in the beginning, there's definitely a problem there, okay? So back to the Hadith. Now, you see the different pictures here, right? This, the man was worried about all the, lo he loves to have beautiful clothes and shoes. Nothing wrong with that, right? Allah loves when we take care of things and uh, we, we beautify things and we have beautiful possessions because he himself is beautiful. So to be, uh, to love beautiful things is not the problem. It's when you let those beautiful things make you feel that you are what better and you look down on people. So if you look at this picture, this is kind of how you want to imagine someone who is full of arrogance, uh, whether they are arrogant, uh, have arrogance or vanity, because they both can have the same attitude of feeling superior to other people. Okay. They just feel like they're more special, extra special. And they see the world in this way where it's like, I am so big and important and I matter. And you're just this tiny little person and you don't matter very much. This is Safrullah, big problem, big disease of the heart. We should all ask Allah for protection from. Okay. And so how do you treat vanity? Well, first, as we've been saying, you have to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the source of all good. And you have to be grateful to him always. Never stop in your gratitude to Allah. And you have to remember that he's aware of everything we do. So those thoughts that you're having, and you know, don't think that you can hide those thoughts. If they're there, he knows they're there. Uh, he knows everything. And so remember to check your heart to, uh, you know, go inward. Or like when you're having a thought about yourself, it, um, you know, let's say, like I said, you're in a, a competition, you know, at the masjid, or maybe you're in the Boy Scouts or the Girl Scouts, or maybe you're in something else, uh, you know, that, that's happening at school. If there's some type of a uh, you know, competition going on and you start thinking of yourself as like, you know what, I'm going to win. I'm really good at this. I'm so, um, you know, better than everybody else. And I'm, I'm so much smarter than everybody else. I've got this, you know, even if it's a thought in your own mind, right? You have to stop and go, Astaghfirullah, why am I thinking that? All good is from Allah. I shouldn't ever think that about myself, right? And just uh, ask Allah if you want to win, you can certainly compete, but just don't do it with those thoughts, right? You want to check yourself. And then to remember, uh, or the, Allah tells us here, um, above all those who have knowledge is the all-knowing, that is God, right? Allah knows everything. And what comes to you of good is from Allah. So every good thing that you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every bad thing that happens to you is from your own self. That's the, the rest of the ayah. Um, but anyway, so uh, the other thing is also you never walk around with arrogance in your heart because of the way you're dressed, your accomplishments, education, work, wealth, your lineage, if you're cultural, you know, some people are very culturally proud. You know, they, they like to say, well, I'm from this country and I'm this and where I come from this family. None of that matters to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What matters is what we talked about in the first session. Qalbun Salim, that beautiful heart that you take to Allah, that's what matters more than anything, not all of these other things. So you don't want to let those things make you feel arrogant towards people or vain. So here is another hadith that's an important one um, because it clarifies something here. So when the Prophet was teaching people, right, he said, uh, whoever drags his garment out of pride will not be looked upon by Allah on the day of resurrection. So what that means are there's some people in this world, uh, especially in that time, and even there are places where they still do this, like royalty or people who are who see themselves as very uh, high bred, which means like they are, um, you know, come from a very high family. And, um, you know, they see themselves as maybe they have power or wealth or name or status. 
they will sometimes wear clothing that drags on the floor. And a lot of celebrities actually do this too. If you look at some of the big awards that celebrities get for movies or music, um, you know, or even just other uh, big events that celebrities go to a lot of times, uh, most of the stories about the event are with the clothing that they're wearing and they'll go on the runway or the, uh, the red carpet, sorry, not the runway, the red carpet, which is where everybody comes before they go into the event. There's like hundreds of cameras taking pictures of these people and they are uh, coming out of their cars. Sometimes some of these people, because their outfits are so uh, like this, they, they're, they, they're very long. They have a, assistants like people there who are helpers carrying their dresses like women and sometimes men too if they're wearing like a long coat or something but they'll have like people that work for them behind them carrying this long train and it's just dragging on the ground but they do it to say i'm so wealthy i have so much money that i can wear a dress or a suit or a coat or whatever and it can just drag all over the floor behind me and everybody will know that i have come into this room because i'm so important this is the attitude that a lot of people have when they uh, dress this way. It's a very arrogant attitude. So when Allah says, whoever drags his garment out of pride, right? Um, they won't be looked upon on the day of judgment. What Abu Bakr, who was his best friend, right? Uh, and he worried, he got worried because he's like, what? Like dragging the garment, like my, sometimes my robe, you know, they used to wear certain clothes that were, uh, sometimes it would fall to the ground or slide down. So he was like, oh my gosh, am, I, I don't want to have, be part of this group of people. So he panicked and he said, uh, one of my robes slides down if I'm not cautious, like if I'm not paying attention, what do I do? And then the Prophet said to him, what he calmed him down and he said very clearly verily you are not doing it out of pride so this hadith tells us first what we shouldn't do but also to remember it's the attitude that it, we're talking about it's not just the action because allah the prophet taught us right <inaudible> which is every action that we do in this world is judged by our intentions so allah is looking at the heart of the person who does this because some people maybe it's their culture like for example someone's actually asking about wedding dresses in the comments that's a good point because in many cultures the wedding dress should have a train it's kind of like part of you know being the bride so is the intention of that bride to walk around saying i'm better than everybody no, most brides don't think that, you know, most people are good people. They don't have that arrogance or a lot of people, but when you, uh, so that's like a cultural thing, but if it's done with the intention of pride, this is where it's really wrong, right? And this is what we're talking about. Vanity, where you walk around and, and, and even though this hadith is talking about dragging the garment, you also want to look at wearing certain clothes but still feeling prideful because as you get older and then you guys start working and getting your own jobs and money you might want to buy some really nice clothing and you might want to start getting some things that you could you know couldn't afford when you were a kid uh, but now that you're making your own money you want to buy maybe a purse or a wallet or a car or anything where there's something that makes you feel really good being wearing that thing but check your heart and check your intentions. Because if in your heart, you start to think like, look at me, I'm so cool. I have this, you know, uh, name, brand name purse, or look at my watch or my glasses or my hat or my car or whatever. I'm so much better than everybody else. This is what we're talking about. It's a, it's a disease of the heart of being overly vain and thinking that you, um, you know, did it, uh, that it's all, because of you, that you have those things and you forget that Allah is the one who gave it to you. And then it leads to arrogance, which is you start to think about other people that they're less than you. And all of this is completely uh, wrong in our faith. We do not engage in that type of behavior. So we stop it at the root, which is 
Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah. Thank you, Ya Allah, for everything you've given me. And I recognize that just as you gave it to me, you can always take it away from me. And I'm just grateful to have it. And that's it. You don't, you know, go beyond that. Okay, so that is the last uh, disease of the heart that we're going to talk about today. And then we will have our next session on Thursday. So let's go ahead and go to questions, inshallah. I want to hear from you guys. Who has some questions, some comments? Who wants to know more about these diseases of the heart as we've been talking about? Let me look up here. Someone said, okay, there was a celebrity at the Grammys who dressed that way. Um, yeah, they had a long dress. Oh, I see it all the time with celebrities. A lot of them will have their, uh, their dresses just trailing behind. What if you're holding the trail? Well, if that's your job, you know what? You're just doing your job. You're getting paid. Some people need work. You know, you don't want to tell that person that they're a bad person. Um, a lot of these people, like I said, it's just their job. They have no choice. They have to do it. But <clears throat> so Lala's asking, is a wedding dress with train okay as long as you're not doing it in vain? Well, I think, again, because it's a culturally accepted tradition, I don't have a clear like fatwa or anything that says, yes, wedding dresses are okay. But we can take the meaning from this hadith that says it's really about the intention because sometimes you might, um, you know, have a garment that just is made a little longer than maybe you would have liked, but you needed to wear it at a wedding or some event. Can we say right away that that person is arrogant and, and or prideful? No, it's about the intention, but it's preferred to try to avoid any type of display that could maybe make people think that about you, you know, that you are that way. So if it's avoidable, you can avoid it. But I can't, you know, I don't, I don't uh, have a clear answer as far as are certain dresses okay because they're culturally accepted. It's more just to say that the intention is what we're looking at, inshallah. Okay. Someone is asking, you only talked about hating on people. So are you allowed to still hate on things? <laughs> so I think this was referring to the su'adhan. So it's a good question. Uh, I mean, I think it really depends on the situation. To have negative thoughts in general, to be a negative person is really not a good quality. Um, you're likely not going to have a lot of friends if you're always, they call them right, the Debbie Downer, for example, uh, which is like a term that's referred to someone who's always down, who's always like just negative energy, right? Negative Nancy. I don't know why there are always women names. We need to come up with negative Ned. There is actually negative Ned, so it's not always women. But the names are just like, like they're just names that describe people that sometimes have way too much negative energy. So you should not make it okay to say, oh, I'm not gonna have su'adhan on uh, people, but sure, on everything else, I'm just gonna walk around being negative. No try to have a positive view of things, right? Try to be balanced. And if something is, is, you know, bad, sure, you can think badly of it because it is bad, right? You don't have to think positive about, you know, a swamp or a sewer, you know, that's gross, it's dirty. So you can be like, Ugh, to something like that. But, uh, you know, when it's just things in creation or objects, you don't need to walk around with a negative attitude, okay? Uh, let's see. We have a lot of other questions here. Can you wear expensive clothes? We did talk about this in previous sessions. There's nothing wrong with wearing uh, nice clothing, but it's really a matter of uh, how much, right? Like if, if you are insisting on only wearing a certain brand or a certain type of clothing and you refuse to wear like normal clothing that other, everybody else wears, then there might be you know, something you wanna look at there. But if you like to have some nice things and you're looking at quality, because sometimes more expensive things are made really well, they're tailored and they're made like with better stitching and you know, better fabric, um, and you like to keep, there's nothing wrong with that at all. As long as, again, you recognize that these are gifts from Allah and you're not extravagant. Extravagance is like where you're doing it too much. It's not balanced. It's 
and and it's likely again because you think of yourself maybe as better and so there's other problems there that you want to look at if that if if it leads to behavior where you know you just want to go and like i said you are exclusively only wanting to wear a certain type of clothing and there are people like that that are very kind of snobby when it comes to these things so that we want to avoid that right um so oh good question <clears throat> can you compare for example with your friend that you have a better voice in the quran would that be a good competition or bad that's a good uh, question you know if you're both like studying to be uh, reciters or you're both in a quran class and the teacher is helping you both on your skills to become better reciters and know more quran there's nothing wrong as long as it's a healthy competition but you shouldn't you should want your friend to also succeed right so this is where want for your brother what you want for yourself really matters because just you know being in a competition with someone that you um that you're friends with is is fine as long as the spirit of the competition is uh full of love and it's not uh, you know something where it's like i don't want you to succeed because i want to win that's you know not good like they call it sportsmanship sportsmanship is to say may the best person win and really truly mean it so if you're in a competition with your friend and you're both working really hard you succeed he succeeds you should want him to succeed or her if it's a girl and you should keep going until the judge or whoever it is or the teacher decides who the winner is and be happy for them <clears throat> but if it's like you're competing to the point where you really don't want them to win because you have to be on top of it and that makes you feel better that's definitely a problem you know so there, that's not a form of healthy competition healthy competition is wanting good for everybody and celebrating like just the excitement of the competition you know like oh we just we got to compete with each other it was fun and then letting it go because at the end of the day especially with quran there is nobody who loses you know if you uh you're a winner in in every case if you won the competition of recitation according to the judges or not you're a winner with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because for you to spend your days practicing and trying to become better at the book of allah already you've won you've won more than you could even imagine so just don't make it a big deal like oh i have to win this title or this award or this thing no when allah sees a, especially if you're a youth and you are so connected to his book uh, you're already a winner right so alhamdulillah um okay we have a few more minutes left i'm, I'm scrolling to see these questions making sure i don't miss because i always hear it well at least from my kids mommy you didn't answer my question <laughs> is hating on cigarettes bad sure that's a great question actually because when we hate something hate is a very strong word first of all right but when we hate something it should always be tied with whatever displeases allah so you can hate things that you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophet said them didn't like or they hate it right so sure any type of a intoxicant or drug or you know like alcohol things that are harmful sure you can hate them because they they they're of no benefit it brings harm to the world it brings harm to people right so that's perfectly fine that's a good question thank you for asking um let's see Thank you, sweetheart, uh, Rahil John. Thank you so much for your very sweet comment. Uh, they have to leave. I appreciate your um, your taking the time to thank me and your very uh, kind message. Khudafis, assalamu alaikum to you and your brother. Let's see. Um, I have another question. Shoes. So I have a question that says, what if someone was wearing really nice shoes and then his friend was wearing like ripped shoes, right? So the shoe that his friend is wearing is not in a good condition. And the guy with the nice shoe says, mine are newer and better, right? Is this permissible? Well, you guys, I hope you know the answer. If you're going to make someone else feel bad because their clothing or what they have is not as nice as you and you want to show off and say mine are better and nicer, that is not 
good at all to do because as we just said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may have blessed you with nicer shoes, but your character isn't very good, right? If you do something like that, that's not having good character. Good adab is not ever making someone feel bad or looking down on them and mocking their things uh, and making them feel like they are less than you. That's bad adab. So even if your shoes are good, the bigger issue is that you have bad character. And that means that you're probably not in good state with Allah. So you should ask Allah to remove that from your heart, that I don't want to ever make someone feel bad uh, because of the way they're dressed and then comparing with my stuff because I have nicer things. No, that's not uh, humble. You should have humility. And as we've been saying, know that whatever good Allah's given you, he can always take it back. So, uh, and the quickest way for that to happen is to show arrogance, right? If you show arrogance, you the blessings will be removed from you. And the opposite is true. If you show gratitude and humility and you're kind to other people and you do good deeds, Allah will increase you in your blessings. So it's up to you. What do you want? You want to risk losing all the nice things you have or you want to keep them, right? Uh, so inshallah, you shouldn't do that. Um, oh, thank you so much, mashallah, Sister Shaista, for your very nice comment. Um, Oh, mashallah. Okay, I think so. I'm trying to jog my memory. I think so. I need to know how old you are because this is a youth class, so I'm not sure if I'm talking to a youth or an adult, but thank you, Sister Shaista, for your lovely comment. I hope to meet you again. Um, what are your, okay, so I have another question. What if you're trying not to make them feel bad or the person says something mean back? You know, if someone is being like petty and they're mocking you, don't go down to their level, you know, be above it. Just look at them and say, I'm not going to do that because you're, you know, you're wrong and Allah is not happy with you. If I say the same thing back to you or I give you a comeback, then I'm the same as you because you said something rude and not nice. And now if I'm trying to defend myself and do the same thing, how is that any better, right? So when you have people that are mean and rude, it's just better to just let it go um, and not to make it, make give them the importance, right? Because if you sit there and you go back and forth and back and forth, you're telling them that, uh, I'm going to give you my time, but your time is very important. And you should say, nope, I'm not going to waste my time on that. And that sends actually a much stronger message to that person because they want you, you know, sometimes people are incite you. They want to make you angry. They want to make you mad. So if you're like, uh, -uh I don't, I'm not doing that. I got better things to do than waste my time on, on that. It'll, upset them even more because they're like, oh, I really wanted them to, uh, to get a reaction out of you. So that's actually a more powerful position to just say, nope, not having it and to walk away instead of giving in, fighting, arguing back and forth. And then everybody's kind of like, okay, this is pointless and either or that, or it could turn into something heated and you end up causing a bigger problem, right? So why do that? Just walk away. You're in a position of power and control. And the other person's just left there by themselves with nobody to complain to. So you win. Okay, mashallah. So, um, so I get another question. This will be the last question, then we'll end it. If someone has nice shoes and another person has a nice shirt, is it okay to tease each other? So whenever you're competing and it's all out of love, um, you know, it's all good. If it's, if it's out of love and there's a spirit of, um, of you know, just happiness and, and teasing in, in a gentle way, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's when it starts to get really mean and you're looking down on people and you're letting that into your heart, that's when, when it's a problem, okay? All right, alhamdulillah. So thank you everybody for being here. Jazakumullah khairan. Uh, inshallah, we will see you on Thursday. Okay, so come back for our, what is it, fifth class? No, sixth class is on Thursday. All right, uh, inshallah, we'll go ahead and then thank you. Jazakallah khair and thank you, Amen. And please say salams to your family as well, all of you. 
Thank you guys. Inshallah, we'll see you Thursday. We'll end in dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa al-Asr inna l-insana la fi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amru s-salihati wa tawasaw bil-haqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusikun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillah. All right. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Take care.